Ooh, you're so cute. Yes, oh, yes, you are so cute. Oh, hey, hi. You guys are there. Didn't see you. Welcome to part two of the mental chess game. Yes, that's what we're going to talk about. Let me see. Where were we? Uh, don't be a coward. Don't be a pussy. That's it. Get ready. Being a coward. That's what you really are. A coward if you think about it. Look at drugs. You're a slave to drugs. Alcohol, same thing. Whatever overcomes a man, to that he is enslaved. That's what the Bible says. A slave. Yes, you are a slave. Yeah, because that alcohol tells you. Actually, it doesn't even speak. It doesn't have to speak. Just be in the same room. It's got more power than you. Because yes, what you're doing, you try to find any reason in your, in your mind possible to get that. Yeah, yesterday was a little kind of a horrible day. I had some bad news today. My, my brother was sick. Oh, goes, are you sick? He's sick. Okay, let's drink the alcohol. You try to find any excuse. The real guy says, no, I don't care about that shit. I'm going to stop. That's the real man. And that's when I would come to what is it to be a real man? Well, I can tell you the line that I always used. You heard me say this line before because it's a go-to line for me. Because I want to be that person. I'm not that guy yet. I'm really trying to get there. But that will be very hard to achieve. So what kind of man do I want to be? Here it comes. I want to be a man who can overcome his weaknesses, vices, and imperfections. A man who's not a slave to his passions, desires, and emotions, but a real guy who can say no to that, who is in control of himself. And if you really listen to that, and you really take it to the heart, we all want to be guys like that. If you don't, you're, you're a pussy. You're a sissy. You're a pussy. You're a lack of courage. You're a coward. That's what you are. But facing it and doing it, that's a whole different animal. How many times you have these overweight people pointing fingers at athletes? Steroids, 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 steroids. Why would they say that? Because they don't have the goal to watch their food. They cannot, they cannot work out every day. And because they can't and they're weak in that aspect, they're just going to point the finger at other people who do are doing that. They're watching what they eat and train every workout day. And they just say they use steroids. You see what I got to a person like that when they say, Oh, you use steroids? I said, because I look. The way I look, I say, okay, well, if I use steroids, that means mean you using anti-steroids, right? And they look at you, I go, yeah, because you look like shit, I'm sorry. You see, you fire at me like that, I will fire right back at you. If you say that I'm using steroids just because I look good, you're a freaking idiot. That's weak people say that, who don't have the balls to go to a gym and to work out and start watching what they eat. They're weak, they're pussies, in that regard. Everything else in the world, they can be freaking masters at everything. But we all have our vices. That's the same with me. You know? Because I'm saying, oh, so, so you're not a pussy? Oh, I am a pussy. I have things that I can't let go. Small things. You know? And since I got back to the faith, I attacked everything. So all the big things are gone. But there's little things. Like a tobacco, smokeless tobacco. I use that snus. This snus, this is so many cl cleared. They stripped it so many times, there's not even a warning that you can get cancer from it. So it's not that. It's just the fact to me that I cannot stop it. And this is the weird part. I, I do it when I go on a trip. Because then in my mind, I go like, okay, if I allow myself one vice, I'm not going to do any other vice. So I take the snus with me. Then when I come home from the trip, I just stop. You don't have to build it down. No, I simply stop. It's really not that hard to stop. But then I start traveling again, and I pick it up again. I go, why would I do this? It's so easy for me. I'm a pussy because of that. Because apparently I can't say no to a freaking stars. You know? And it's only when I travel. I stop when I come home. Makes no sense, right? But you see, we all have our things that we cannot quit. This is very hard. So another thing that I always tell people is, don't quit everything right away. I, I like in fighting, I like in everything, make it a journey, don't make it a race. You hear me say this many times. That's a line that I got from uh, Dwayne Ludwig from the bank system, the bank Muay Thai. Uh, they always do start cutting down very gradually. That's what you want to do. And if you want to get better in shape, bring it up slowly but surely. Every person who was super overweight that ran a marathon, they all have the same story. Same, I heard it. So many times already. I just started walking to the end of the street and I walked back. That was the first time when they decided, I'm going to work on my body. Walking 100 yards to the end of the street and come back. And then the next day, they walked to the next street. 
And then it went a block over and came back. And baby steps. And every time it's a little bit more. And suddenly they're freaking, they're walking for 45 minutes of an hour. Oh, okay. And as some people, some of them, they start, wow, I can do this already. Let's push a little bit. Let's start jogging very lightly. And they start jogging it. Oh, that's harder now. Yeah, it is harder. And I can't do the whole way, but you know what? Let's work towards that. And that's something they realize in a month, they can go the whole way jogging. Let's turn it up a little bit. You see? And that always leads to people start doing suddenly running a freaking marathon. It didn't happen when they were like 100 pounds overweight and the next day were going to a marathon. No. Gradually, slowly but surely. Attack this with everything. But there's one big thing. You have to stick with it. You can't fall back. And if you fall back, you're going to have to make penises for that because otherwise it's really hard. You know, so alcohol, for instance, you cannot drink less. Drugs, you cannot use less drugs. Those, those kind of addictions, you need to quit instantly. You have to do it cold turkey. There is no way because if you drink only one glass, which could be good now, but you will grab any excuse there is a death in the family, somebody friend to see. It doesn't really matter what it is. You will always find an excuse to drink a little bit more than you did last time. So those heavy addictions, you have to cut out right away. But a little one, for instance, sugar. I want to stop using sugar. Okay. How many you use in your coffee? Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons. Okay. What about this? Today, start with one teaspoon uh, and 75%. One three-quarter teaspoon. Do that for a whole week. And you realize you're not going to notice anything. After a week, that amount is, gives you the same feeling as the full two teaspoons had before. Also, oh, let's go to one and a half. And do that for a week. Until you feel, oh, it feels the same as when I had two teaspoons. One and a quarter. I don't need to tell you what to do. But the thing is that once you go below one, once you go below half, don't go one day, hey, let's add one more spoon just for today. Because that will fight bite you in the back. It will always come back. This is how addiction starts again. All the time. Why would I know that? Because I've been there so many times. Today I'm not going to drink. And at around 4 o'clock I hit the snooze button and I start drinking again. It's about not hitting that freaking snooze button. But now for years you're used, your body, your mind, everything is used to get that really good feeling at around 4 o'clock. You see, stop that. You got to break that cycle. And once you break that cycle, you'll be amazed how fast your body starts recouping to the other way and then a new person is going to come out. So start today. Do it right now. You want to make your knuckles big and strong? You know what you only have to do? Starts with when you sit down, you're memorizing something on the ground with two stones. Start just hitting it like this. You don't have to hit any harder. Oh, oh, oh. Just for one minute while you're reading something. And go to two minutes, go to three minutes, go to four minutes, five minutes. You're reading something anyway. You're sitting in front of the TV. Well, I will bring two stones, put it next to me, and start hitting it. Just like that. And slowly but surely, you're getting faster, you're going harder and harder. What your body starts doing now is start build up calcification as well. If you break it, it's too much. It's going to have to wait till it's healed. You know, so you don't want to go too hard. Very gentle. Every time, a little bit more. Your shin bones, I want to make them numb. Start slowly. Don't start freaking hammering with sticks on it right away with Coca-Cola bottles, all that crap that they tell you. No, just start kicking your back. A heavy back and a long back. And you'll find out at the bottom it's always harder. Start kicking you above that. And then slowly but surely, you go lower and lower and lower. Don't bruise it because if you bruise it, you're going to have to wait till the bruise is gone and then you can restart again. Now you put yourself in the back. Very gentle. That's with every addiction as well. Very gentle. And you'll be amazed if you do those five minutes a day hitting a stone or maybe go up to 10 minutes. Your knuckles are going to be freaking huge like that. It will work over time. But no, this is not how we're programmed. We want now instant gratification. That's the problem. And now with the stupid cell phones, I want to eat now on your phone and then we'll send the food. Yeah, but why not jumping in the car? Why not walk to the place if it's not too far away? Tell yourself, you know, I'm going to just walk to the place and get it. And most of the time, walking to the place will also start making you think about, mm, maybe I shouldn't order what I wanted to order. Maybe go a little bit healthier on one side. You know, and that's with everything. 
If you want to cut carbs out, cut them out. Start slowly. Take 10 potatoes, go to eight, uh, nine potatoes. That's literally it. Go to eight, go to seven, to the six, you know, up where you're on your protein because that doesn't make you fat. But you see, find a slow balance and, and, and the correct balance. It's important that you don't go too fast. But whatever happens again, do not go back, not even for one or two times because eventually it will catch you back. The last thing I'm going to say is about alcohol. This is how it started with me the whole time. I stopped drinking. And let's say I'm like uh, six months in, feeling very strong. And I see everybody drinking a glass of wine. And I go like, you know what? I think I'm strong enough to drink one glass of wine. And you are. You drink one glass of wine. You stop. You eat. Everything is okay. But that comes back at you. That one glass, and two weeks from now, this voice tells you, hey, you remember that glass you had? You control the dude, you're to complete the control, and you do it again. And again, you're able to do it with one glass of wine. See? Confirmed. I got it under control. This is where pride kicks in. This is when you start making mistakes, in fighting, in everything. Overconfidence is always wrong. And then you do it maybe one or two more times, one beer, or one drink, glass of wine. And then the voice is going to say, hey, I smell drink too. I mean, you've been able to control it for a long time now already. Drink two glasses of wine. And then you drink two glasses of wine. And we all know this as alcoholics, if you drink them very fast, one after each other, you're going to feel a little buzz. And that's the thing we're hooked on. And we want to get that feeling back. And from that moment on that you take the two glasses, within a month or within six weeks, you're back to full drinking. And again, how do I know? Because that happened with me. A hundred times, you know, every time. That's how you get back. So very simple for me is to say, I'm not going to drink. And if I do that, it's much easier. Did I break the rule? I broke the rule, but maybe once a month, you know, like the El Wapo drink is there now, right? The whiskey. And I was just at this party of this place that we were actually, it's not a party. We're doing a uh, signing autographs with Forrest Griffin as well to raise money for, uh, um, uh, Stefan Bader's family who passed away, you know, so, but I said, I'm going to drink one of my whiskeys because we were also promoting the whiskey there and they made some signature drinks out of them. I had to at least try one, right? The signature drink. So I did. They say, you want to try the other one? I said, let me try that tomorrow, but not today. Because I know today, if that second drink is going to give me a little bit of the feeling, I might be triggered to go back to it. That's how Weak we are, that's what the pussy we are. I have to now, because I'm 58 years old, never had it under control. Now, I've been really good the last few years, so I think I have it under control, but I will never hear me say it, because once I confirm it, that's when pride hits me in the back again, and it's gonna go wrong. So watch out, then you drink a little bit, it's just for the taste, you don't have to finish it. You see, I need to cut salt out. You need to cut salt out, same thing as with the sugar. Slowly but surely. If you cut it out right away, you're not going to enjoy the food anymore. And a week later, you're fed up with it and you start adding the salt. And most of the time, it's when you do more, right? All the guys who die of a heroin overdose, most of the time, they, were, they quit. And then suddenly, they can't hold it anymore. Whatever reason, they break it. Unfortunately for them, they use the same amount as they used last time or maybe even more because they want to feel really good. And boom. And now suddenly, they're dead. You see, so watch out with those things. You know, set rules to yourself. And you heard me say this before, the one person in the world that you cannot lie to will be yourself. Of course, the Lord, but you can't lie to him because he knows. So it doesn't really matter. So people you should care about, you are the first person to care about. You should care about. And if you tell yourself, I'm going to do this tomorrow, do it. Because if you come back on your word, on your own, that you told to yourself, you're weaker. You're becoming a you become a pusillanimous, right? Like of courage or determination or cowardly. So watch out with that stuff. Everything you can train, just do it in a nice and easy way so your body can adapt to it. Don't make it into a race. My boss, I'm totally out of shape and I have a fight in uh, four weeks. Don't fight. Don't roll the dice. Don't go for the big payday. Say, you know what? I'll do it when I'm really prepared because otherwise... I wouldn't do it because if you lose it in a bad way, that might mentally do something to you and then you get out of it as well. Everything you can control. Oh, one more thing because we're talking about uh, fighting. 
uh, Israel and Asanya. What a freaking man, right? Look at that, what he did. He gets, he fights the guy, loses three times to him, to the opponent. From the three times, he gets two times knocked out. Did you see anything that he was worried after that in the interviews? No, nah, I'll find a way. I'll find a way. I don't care. I'll find a way to break him. This guy, he knew. He knew. And what did he do? The, 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 what did he do? The, the, the rope a dope that he did? He knew that Pereira was going to open up once he goes up in his hands. And what did I just said? Pride is a mother, man. You got to really watch out for pride because that's the moment that you don't start clean, hitting clean anymore. You start opening up. I got him. It's in the bag. You remember the first thing with the low kick and with Morris Smith that I was talking about? I got him. Boom. Now you're going to get knocked out. And that's what happened there. He knew he was going to do that. And if you see him, a friend of mine sitting, and then I was watching the show with Dylan. He goes like, dude, he's rope doping. I said, well, cage doping, right? Because it's against cage. But he was. You see him look. It's not like he looks away and he's in full defense. He was looking for the moment for him to explode. It comes out over top. What does that say? Why would I use him as an example? Because I say this many times as well. It's all in the head. It's all mental. Like any other fighter who's been on top for a long time, who's never been knocked out, never anything. After they get knocked out, they lose the glow and suddenly they get put it back together anymore. Now suddenly that confirmed to them, wait a minute, I am human. I might get knocked out. And that disturbs them for the rest of their careers. Now the people who are always were guys who broke that rule were the K1 guys, the K1 kickboxers, Ernesto Hoos, Peter, Earth, Semi Shield, you name them, all these great freaking kickboxers. Those guys get knocked out and then they come back the next time and they win the whole tournament again. So they found a way to be simply very honest to themselves and say, listen, this happens in training, it happens in fighting, I walked into a punch. So what? Doesn't mean anything. I'm just going to cut a fresh slate and I'm going to start again. And that's what Israel Alessandra did. He just came and he said, no, I'm going to get him. Shook it off, didn't give a crap what happened in the past. And then he went after him and he got him and by way of knockout as well. Those are men. Those are exceptions to the rules. Remember I said, we all of us are a bunch of pieces. But then again, I'll guarantee you that even Israel Adesanya will have parts of his, lives, uh, his life that he's also a pussy at. Might be small things, big things. We all have them. We all have them. For you, it's just to get rid of the big ones first. Tackle the big one. Don't try to tackle four at the same time. It's not going to work. Take the one that you're most disturbed by. Kick that one's ass, ass first. And once you got it under control, then go to the next one. It's the only way to do it. Take your time. I read a book, The Greatest Salesman in the World. And they told me, because Matthew McConaughey, which I think, and think is a great person, he said that book changed his life. And I remember I was shooting a movie, Mall Cup 2. And I was driving over to, uh, with my car to Las Vegas, because that's where we shot the movie. And it was, I just saw Matthew McConaughey talking about it. I go like, I'm on a set. It's going to be for two months. That's already two months from the 10 months. I'm just going to do it. I was 42 or 43. But I just decided to do it because it's the only way to uh, finish it is to start doing it, right? So I did. And boy, I'm, I'm really happy that I, I, I did that. Why is it 10 months? Because it's only this thick of a book. It's about the greatest salesman in the world who can sell everything, he's a really good guy, good person too, inside and out, who's looking for an apprentice because he knows that he's eventually going to pass away. He finds this one kid and he promises a lot and he helps the kid. He says, listen, I want you to become, uh, in my footstep, become the greatest salesman in the world. And he gives him this big box and there's 30 scrolls in there. And every scroll he has to read for one month straight. In the morning when he wakes up, and it's just a five, six, maybe seven minute read. When you wake up in the morning, fresh. First thing you do, read that. Seven minutes. Let's make it seven minutes. Then during the day, you, you, you remove yourself from all craziness, turn your phone off, you read it again. And then at night, before you go to sleep, you read that again. And what this is a very smart way of doing it. Because you're going to find out that within two weeks, you memorize the whole freaking thing. It's part of you right now. You know, now it's in your head. And a lot of these things that he's giving you are things that you already know. 
but you don't do it anymore. You see, and it's a great way to revamp. And then the next month, there's this new scroll. Boom. And if it's a month, 31 days, you're going to do it for 31 days. You're going to read the same thing over and over again. You're brainwashing yourself. See, it's the same thing that I did. But stamina is just brainwashing yourself. And get it in your, inside your head. And once it's in there, now you probably start living like that. I was talking about it with the faith people. Who, I'm, going to, I'm going to church. Uh, that's why you're... You're a practicing Christian, you're not at all. If you're a practicing Christian, it means that you're busy with it every moment of the day. That's what a practicing Christian means. Otherwise, it will be easy, right? You walk into my gym once a week, and now you're a professional fighter. Hmm, doesn't really work like that, right? Maybe you're going to take some classes. Yeah, oh, actually, maybe you have to do it some more. Yeah, oh, maybe you have to learn about it more. Oh, and then the most important, maybe you have to start living like a fighter. And that's the same thing with a Christian. Living like a Christian. Not the bad people people want to focus on. No, take a perfect freaking saint and that's what you model yourself to. It's going to be very hard. For me, very hard. You know, because it's, it, it's daily work. Every moment of the day, you have to be on your freaking guard because things might happen. And you're going to have to see emotions take over. Try to control that. So, in a nutshell, the biggest thing that you would, uh, would help you for now, what I would do, if, if you're a fighter, doesn't matter for any sport, it will work as well, but especially for fighting. When you hit the back, poker face. Stoic. Just think that. When you're doing weights, stoic. It has nothing to do with fighting. It does have something to do with fighting because you keep yourself relaxed. Every muscle in, this, in the body is relaxed. The only muscles that you're going to hit uh, use are the ones that you're actually using. That's why I said, if you're completely relaxed and then start hitting it back with no crazy faces, then you're going to shine. You know the O2 trainer, and don't worry, I'm not going to talk about this because we talk about it enough. It's a breathing device that I developed to train your breathing muscles, right? It takes less than five minutes a day. I do five minutes a day. Everybody who hears that. I get better stamina. I get COPD, uh, anxiety, PTSD. I mean, asthma, cystic fibrosis. I mean, the things, sleep apnea, all the things that it does are insane. But five minutes a day? Oh, I'll do it. They do it for about a week. And then those five minutes a day, pusillanimous, they become pusies. They stop doing it. It's very simple. If you work out, why don't you do it just before your workout? Make it a five minute longer workout. That's what I do. But that's, that's just a five minute workout. I did the Exodus 90 and I was doing the video uh, to promote it. Say, hey, listen, I'm going to do the Exodus 90. When it cut you off from everything. You can only take cold showers. This was the first thing I said on the video. I said, the thing that I'm going to say right now is going to cut out 70% of you guys. That's a big number what I'm saying. 70% of you are not going to do it because you can't handle what I'm going to say next. You're allowed for 90 days only to take cold showers. And you should read the comments below. Even after I said it the way I said it, people go, yeah, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do it. Well, you can. Because if you think about it, if, if a war breaks out and you're not able to get warm water, well, you're going to be the most smelly person on the planet, or are you going to use cold water? You're going to use cold water because that's going to be the new norm. Guess what? You are able to do it. But once you do a, a, a rigorous exercise like that for 90 days, you can have only three meals a day. You have to work out every day. You can only lost, listen to music. You can be on your internet, not to surf, nothing. You can only for your job, you can use TV, um, internet, and phone. You can't watch TV anymore. Once a week, you might break the rule. But otherwise, you can't watch TV anymore for 90 days. Ooh, you can't do that yet. They don't even start with it, dude. That's, you're, you're a pussy. And you have to admit, you are a pussy. Because otherwise, you would do it. But once you did those 90 days, you realize there's a lot of stuff in your world, in your life, yeah, in your world, that you don't really need. All the stupid likes. Why do you need likes? For what? What's it going to do for you? Are you a famous person who needs the likes? No, because if you're really famous, you already have them. Don't worry about it. They got you. You know, it's all fake anyway. Let it go. That's why you don't see me post a lot on the online, because I stopped doing all that stuff. It's it's not necessary. What necessary is for you to put some goals out that you want to be, and then do not get distracted and be that person. And the only way to do it is simply living up to your own word that you made to yourself. So never lie to yourself, be honest, and do whatever you told yourself that you were going to do. And you do those two things, you can face anything in the world. 
it's going to be easy. No, it's going to be very hard. I'm working on it daily. You know, like I said, I still have my little vices that need to go. But I'm pretty good. All the big ones are gone. Not saying they have to watch out. That's alcohol. Because they have to watch out. Because if God forbid something really bad happens in my life, can I use that as an excuse? I don't know. I feel really strong. And for years I've been doing great. But you never freaking know. So never say that you mastered it. Because once you do that, there's no way to go. You're only going to get better. Godspeed, everybody. But wait, there's more. I was thinking about a few funny ones that you can use on your friends. Okay, I'll give you a few ones, right? So uh, first of all, if you look at your body and you go like, uh, then he for sure is going to think something is on his lip and he's going to try to wipe it off. You can do the same thing, of course, with the nose. It's important. Also, just do that. That works like a charm. Uh, standing right in front of him. And while you're looking at him, just look to the side and go uh, do that. So without me talking, it will be like, what's up, man? Everything good? You see, it looks like somebody's behind him who's about to do something. This is a cool one, too. Standing very close to your friend, and especially when his hairline starts thinning, start looking at his hairline. I'm telling you, works all the freaking time. Or when somebody stands very close to you and he's talking in your face, ask him, if he wants a piece of gum. And then don't take a piece of gum yourself. That's very important because then he believes it's because of him that you're giving it to him. See, those little things are really fun. One more. I want to do one more because I believe it's hilarious. Um, oh, I actually have two more. Let me start with the first one. It's looking at somebody's ear. This is what I would do when I have a stare down with somebody. I look at their ear. So it's a little tiny bit off. Not too much. If you look to the side, it's not working. But if you look at his ear, they have no clue where you're looking at. It's a really weird. Try it on the front and see how that looks. Looks like a complete uh, psychotic. The last one that I want to say is in fighting. During fighting, you can do this. You need to be very confident about yourself, though. You need movement pointing with a certain technique because you're going to paint the picture in his head. So, for instance, if I'm sparring with you and constantly when I'm about to give a low kick, I point at your leg and then I give a low kick. I continue fighting, boom, boom, few combinations, pop, 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 make it a hook, point at his leg, poof, low kick. And you keep doing that over the first round. You just do it like four times. Over five minutes, you know, don't do it too hard because otherwise they know you're going to set them up. Then in round number two, once you start pointing and kicking and you see them starting to defend, that's the moment he's ripe for a head kick, because then you do exactly the same thing again. You're pointing, the meter is down, every is down, but then with your peripheral vision, you pick it up and a head kick to the head comes. That is simple stuff to do, yet very effective to do. All right, Godspeed everybody, start tricking the crap out of everybody you know and see if it works. Party on. When you have two fighters equally skilled fighting each other, the one with the most stamina is probably going to win the match. When you have two teams equally skilled, no matter what sport it is, facing each other, the team with the most stamina is probably going to win the match. Now, why is that? Because they can keep on pushing. Now, your lungs don't do anything by themselves. They're just two bags. There's not a single muscle in your lungs. The way for your lungs to open up is by your breathing muscles. And so that you know, you have 11 pounds of breathing muscles and it's the number one priority in your body. I mean, three, four minutes without it and you might be dead. Now, when you're in an athletic event and you're gassing, you know what's happening? That's your breathing muscles stealing blood. And yes, that's a medical term, blood stealing. Stealing blood for your limbs to support the breathing muscles so they can keep you alive since it's the number one priority in your body. And now you might ask, wait a minute, so why don't I work out my breathing muscles? Now that's the right question. And that's what the O2 trainer does. The O2 trainer is an inspiratory muscle device. And this works out your breathing muscles, your 11 pounds of breathing muscles. So you can have maximum chest expansion. And that means that you can maximally fill up your lungs with air. If you want to know more about how breathing works, go to o2trainer.com. And if you want to know everything about breathing, go to breathingforwarriors.com. Dr. Belisa Vrenich, it's a world, she's a world-renowned breathing expert, and myself, 
we put a breathing course together, a three hour breathing course where we hit everything that you need to know about breathing. Godspeed and breathe on.